Hi there and welcome. We are just a few minutes before we get started here and I always like to do my little tech check first. So if you can hear me, would you raise your hand? Click that little raise hand. Oh yay, thank you. Oh that was so quick. Some of you are so fast. That's wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. I'm so glad you're with me. Now I'm a little worried about some of you because our weather here has been reporting that there's a hurricane headed for the panhandle of Florida and I think we've got some people from Florida on this call and I'm a little worried for you. Um, are you safe? Are you okay where you're at now? I assume that if it was of imminent danger you would not be here. I'm just hoping that you're all safe. If you know if you want to share how you're doing please do that. Also while we're waiting I would love it if you would take a minute and type in your name in the questions box and let us know where you are from, just so we can see who we've got with us today. Marilyn's from Calgary, Marilyn. You're from Calgary, cool. Do I know you, Marilyn? I know I've seen you on my calls an awful lot, but hmm. Martha from the Texas Panhandle. Cool. Now, did I get it right that it's the Florida Panhandle that's expecting the, the hurricane? Joan from Aurora. Good job, Joan. Glad to have you here from Ontario. Cool. This is great. We've got the deep south. We've got um, fairly far east. And Calgary. Lovely. Lovely. It's always fun to find out who's here and where you're from and that kind of stuff. I'm going to get to know you during the course of this call as well because there are things that we play here that we want to um, just get everybody involved. So we've got just under a minute till we're going to start again. If you've just joined us, we'd love to have you type in your name and where you're from. And if there's anything weird happening in your weather, share that too. Here in Calgary, we're having really bizarre weather. We had a foot of snow just a few days ago and then some of it melted off and now we've got a little bit more. And so we've been just below the freezing point, but in this next week, we're supposed to get up to anywhere between 15 and 20 centigrade, which is you know comfortably in the 60s Fahrenheit. And it's like, oh my goodness, strange year for weather where we are at here. Excellent, okay, we are ready to begin. So let me just come up in here and, okay, good, we are ready. Super, I think we've got it together. I think we actually even know where we put it. That's always a good thing. And um, I will do my best to keep my eye on the question, on the questions box while we're doing this. And this is from Marilyn Clark. Uh, she says, I've done a few of these with you. You are an absolutely amazing instructor. Marilyn, thank you. I so enjoy your passion and information. Marilyn, thank you. That just makes my day. I'll just get all mm, smiley about that. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. I have fun teaching. I love teaching, and that's why I teach. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. There's a lot of things I've learned that I don't do because I didn't enjoy them. So, right, that's what we do, right? We focus where we're good and where we have fun. And so thank you very much for that. All righty. So today we are doing Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology, and we're doing some circulatory work today. And um, we're going to look at some case studies, and in the process of doing that, we're going to look at some markers as well. We're going to talk about the kinds of questions you'd ask your client, the kinds of recommendations you, recommendations you could consider making, and then and we'll work from there. So you will learn something that you could actually take with you today. We have to do this disclaimer, of course, anytime we're teaching this kind of information. This information is meant for your education only. It is not meant to diagnose or prescribe. With iridology, we never diagnose anyways, and we never prescribe. Now, if you are a primary care health provider, as in a licensed medical doctor, your parameters will be different. Typically on these calls, uh, we attract naturopaths, and in some states, they may be licensed medical practitioners and they may be able to diagnose or prescribe, but in many, they're not. Same with Canada, many, they're not licensed in that way. 
a lot of herbalists, a lot of nutritionists, and people that do other holistic things as well. And so we are not licensed to diagnose or prescribe, and we have to keep that in mind. And that's never what iridology was meant to do anyways. You are responsible for any results, good or bad, that result from using this information. So it is up to you how you use this. So welcome. Our focus today is circulatory system, and in particular, we are going to look at some specific markers and a few case histories that have really strong cardio and circulatory involvement. Thank you for coming. It's so much more fun to teach when there's people present. Really, it is. It's hard to teach to an empty room. Even though we are only going to be get together, I'm so excited, I'm stumbling over my words already. Even though we're only going to be together for a short time, I'm going to make this really well worth your time. I've scheduled about 90 minutes, and if you know me well, you know that I usually go over a little bit, right, Marilyn? <laughs> so I hope you've got 90 minutes blocked, and I hope you've got some flexibility to hang with me for a little longer than that if, if we need to. And I'm encouraging you to play all in with me today. There's going to be some surveys or quizzes. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm going to ask you to type things in. The more you participate, the more you will learn. The more you participate, the brighter I get and the better I teach. It's kind of one of those things where you fuel me. And so I just encourage you to just get all in there and participate wherever I ask for it. Because the seriously, the more you participate, the better I teach. If it's at all possible, I encourage you to take your distractions and put them in flight mode or turn them off if you can. Close the door. If you've got little ones around, get them occupied. If you've got pets, do what you need to to keep them shh, quiet. I don't like competition from barking dogs. And just try to be present, fully present and accounted for here. Regardless of whether your specialty is nutrition or herbology or some other holistic health field, I know you're going to leave today with information you can actually use with your clients. One of the things I've learned over my years in this industry is that the best practitioners keep learning. They know they don't know it all. They know they have to keep up on things and so they continue to learn. So Congratulations for being one of those learners and those practitioners, and thank you again for being here. I do need to know a little bit about you. I, I like to tweak my presentations on the fly, and so I want to start with this little poll. What training do you already have in iridology? Or do you have, do you have some? Do you have none? Where are you at? It just helps me to know where we are going, where I need to go with this. If I need to make sure I give really clear explanations of things or if I need to can go a little deeper. OK, OK. And, you know, we are a fairly small group today, so I won't know who hasn't played with me in my sandbox, but I will know if someone hasn't. And it looks like we've probably got a couple of people that haven't yet. So please do weigh in, play with me so that I can really tailor this to you. So it looks like what we've got is with maybe three quarters of you having voted so far, hopefully the last couple will, we've got a lot of brand new people. So welcome, welcome. I will make sure this is perfect for you. Um, Belinda says she's new. And I'm so glad she's Belinda. I'm so glad you made it today. We've been emailing back and forth a little bit. And I'm glad you made it today. This is going to be fun. Okay, so thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. 75% of you voted. And of that, 67% of the people who voted are brand new to this. We've got one who's or a couple who are, have constitutional or constitutional training, which is where we focus here, and one of you who is IPA certified. So well done. Nice to have you with me. Thank you very much. Okay, so those of you, the few of you that have some iridology training, hopefully um, you were taught how to integrate iridology with whatever else you do. And that's the exciting thing is to use this as a way of, of building and of, 
of augmenting what you do in your practice. Iridology isn't the focus of the practice, it's a tool in your toolbox. But some of you, um, sometimes when, when we learn iridology, we're not taught how to integrate it. We're just taught about the eyes and we're not taught about the nutrition or the herbology or the emotion or any of the other pieces that can go with this. And that's what I like to do in every class that I teach. I always try to pull in some nutrition, some lifestyle, some emotion, things like that, because otherwise we're working very one dimensionally and one dimension does not work in the holistic view of things. I once had a student, she was a naturopath from the Eastern States, well-trained, well-trained, loved her to pieces. We just had so much fun working together. And she'd come to some of my other webinars. This is before I started teaching the IPA iridology uh, curriculum, but I was teaching iridology and she had been certified by one of the biggest names in the States. And it wasn't Dr. Jensen, it was somebody else. She was frustrated because she'd finished the certification five years previously. She'd bought an expensive iridology camera, which was still in its original packaging in the corner of her office. She hadn't used her iridology at all. No one had taught her how to integrate it. So she had attended a few of my other classes on dealing with herbs or PCOS or other things that I've taught along the way. And I, I was promoting that I was teaching an iridology course. And she said, well, I've already done it and I never use it. And I said, well, why don't you use it? And she said, because I don't know how. I said, well, hang with me and I'll teach you. So she said, okay. I'll take your course. By the end of our second class, she sent me an email saying, I get it. I finally get it. I've opened my camera. I'm taking pictures. I now understand. Teach me everything you can. So it was exciting to see her transformation. She just needed to know how to tie it in. The, um, so another thing we sometimes have problems with, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more as we go, is that if we've got nutrition training or if we've got herbology training, sometimes we are not taught how to create a protocol or where to start with. And we're going to spend a bit of time looking at that tonight or this morning. It's not night yet. Dark here because it's snowing. Uh, we'll spend some time looking at that today as well. I'm also going to invite you to hang out with me on on social media, YouTube. I try to put something new up there probably once a week. Instagram, a little more active there once or twice a week. Facebook, Facebook, hang out with me at my group. Look for my group, Iridology Education. Ask to join it and I will of course let you in. That's where we can talk about iridology. It's a small group, it's growing. I post uh, announcements about these webinars and about classes that are coming up on all different levels. And it's just a great place to hang out with like-minded people. So I hope you will join me at some of those in some of these places. Um, and I do need to know a little bit more about you. I have another poll. And so this is an important one as well. I need to know what training you already have in holistic health. Do you have nutrition or um, homeopathy, herbology? I left, I left herbs off that list. Man alive. Okay, I'm looking at my master list. I'm looking at what I've given you. If you've got herbs, type that in, okay, as uh, when we finish the, the poll here. Body work, energy work, not much yet, just starting out. We've got some nutrition, we've got some energy work. Yeah, a little bit of body work, not much yet, just starting out, great, okay. Yeah, okay, so good. We've got some good nutrition and some good new people with us, so this is exciting. Fabulous, excellent, okay, lovely. And most of you voted, thank you for that. I am just gonna close that. I'm gonna pop down into uh, my questions box, and again, if you've got herbs behind you, type that into questions. Marilyn says she's starting a new program and education. Lovely. Okay. So, Marilyn, that sounds like you're diving deeper into the holistic field, which is wonderful. I'm so glad you're with us. So, our purposes today are twofold. The first one is I want to teach you a little bit about iridology as it relates to the circulatory system. And the second one is I want to show you how iridology can help you in your practice because there is a really awful reality right now 
out there in the world. And that is that there's a lot of holistic practitioners that are really struggling in their business, especially if they are not naturopaths. Naturopaths tend to have that corner on the market because oftentimes they can get insurance coverage and things like that, and they can requisition tests. They have that market kind of cornered. And so if you're a herbalist or nutritionist, it is sometimes a little hard to generate the momentum to have your business going well. The in internet has made it so easy for people to do their own research online, to self-diagnose whether they're correct or not, and then to self-prescribe, again, whether they're correct or not. And so it can make it pretty hard for us, but iridology can really help you overcome that. I wanna look at what some of the challenges are beyond those uh, couple of purposes we have today. The first challenge that we sometimes face is we don't know where to start with making our recommendations and setting our therapeutic priorities. So we've worked with our clients. We've got all of this information in our heads probably from all of the classes and workshops and training we've done. And we use an intake form that you ask so many questions, most of which are totally irrelevant to your client. They're really just a waste of time. And you're trying to pull it together. You're trying to figure out, okay, with all these questions I've asked and all these answers I've gotten with my client, with what my client wants help with, how do I choose my starting point? And how do I set up a roadmap for what to do next and next and next and next? And how do I convey that to my client? The second challenge we have is that sometimes when we get a client in, actually a lot of times from what I can tell from asking these questions, questions of, of uh, nutritionists and herbalists is you've got the client in there, you've gathered their history, you've given them a bit of a starting point and you send them off, but now you go off and you do two or three or four hours of homework on behalf of your client, but you're not getting paid for it. You've charged them for the hour you were face to face. Now you're investing your own time to create a protocol or a program and you're going to share that with them when they come back problem with this is twofold. Number one, you're not getting paid for those hours. I'm not a money grabber, but I do have bills to pay. And if I'm not getting paid for those hours, how are my bills getting paid, right? Unless I'm charging an exorbitant amount for that first consultation. The second thing is that in school, we're taught to do case studies. And in that case study, we're given this huge profile outlining all the problems this client has and all their special needs. And we are taught to write a comprehensive start to finish, top to bottom, inside out, upside down program that addresses everything. And if you take that step back from what you've written, you realize there is no way humanly possible anyone could ever do this based on one consultation. There's too much information, it's too overwhelming. And so that leads to problem number three where your clients are overwhelmed. And that means that you've fire hosed them with so much information that they either grab the one or two pieces they think they can work with and they leave and never come back. Or they just go, I'm out of here. I can't do this. No one could be that perfect. You are not the practitioner for me. Consequently, you are always struggling to find new people to work with, struggling to find new clients. And so I need to ask you, do any of these sound familiar? If any of these sound familiar, I would like you to raise your hand. Yeah, okay, yeah, not good. And so if I can show you using iridology how to find a starting point and middle points and an end point that would span, say, six consultations. So that client wants to come back for everything you've got over six consultations. If I can show you how to help your clients be massively successful in baby steps rather than a huge failure in one step, would that be good? If that sounds great, let's have you raise your hand. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie, for weighing in. Tammy, thank you, and Martha and Joan, thank you. Yeah, because that's what we want. We do nobody any good if we scare them away, right? 
we don't do our clients any good and we don't do ourselves any good and we do need to pay our bills. So how do I know these are your challenges? I know these are your challenges because I have been there myself. You should have seen the programs I developed for clients when I was first starting out. No one taught me the art of protocol. Number two, I've interviewed a lot of holistic practitioners and almost every one of them has been there exactly and precisely. Now, if you're there now, you do not need to stay there. We can get you out of that. So this is me. This is why I am so qualified to share this information with you. I've been a holistic health coach since 1981. Yes, I started when I was 12. I'm just kidding. A master herbalist since 1983. Nutritional consulting practitioner since 94. That was with, is with the IONC. And then I decided to also join the CANNP and become a natural nutrition clinical practitioner in 2016. I've been a certified iridologist since 93, and I'm certified several times over with different organizations. But in 2016, I decided to become a certified comprehensive iridology instructor under the IPA umbrella. I have been teaching wellness professionals since 1985. You know, when I started out, the earth was young, grass was green, and we did not yet have the internet. What that meant is that there, it was hard to get training. It was hard to find classes. So I took classes everywhere I could. I often had a breastfeeding baby in tow and we'd go off to take a class and uh, the baby was the hit of the class. Or I would uh, go to workshops here in Calgary when they would come. And I spent a lot of time paying money and attending classes, some of which were great and have served me well and have blessed me with mentors and some of which, most of which were not so great. But I learned how not to do things, right? So it wasn't wasted money. It was just learning another way to not do it. And that's okay. And so, uh, of course, my most, uh, aside from my successes in business, certainly my crowning pride and joy is that I'm the wife of one, the mom of seven. And the grandma of seven. And those who've been with me know that I tend to have a very tender heart. All right. So iridology can help you. It can help you eliminate your intake forms, except for your waiver or release form. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you practice. The world has become litigious. You have to have a waiver or release form that lets people know who you are, what you do, and what you are not, and what you cannot do, so that they can never come, and, and then you need to behave accordingly, of course, to protect yourself. We never want them coming back to try to sue you. Iridology can help you start creating deep rapport from the moment you start the consultation instead of starting with you looking down to read that awful intake form. The intake form is not useful. It actually creates walls. It does not build bridges. In order to create excellent rapport, you have got to with your client, eye to eye. And I'm not just saying that because it's iridology. Iridology will help you do a core assessment in less than five minutes. Know the right questions to ask, uh, prioritize what needs to be dealt with first, and create a therapeutic priorities list for future consultations. It will eliminate your unpaid homework time. No more spending two or three or four hours outside of your paid time doing homework. So I need to ask you, those of you who said that you might be spending extra time on your own developing protocols, if we could give you back all of that time, right, you're actually getting your work done when you're with your session, your, your client, you're not having to do it on your own time, what would you do with that time? I want you to type that in. What would you do with that time? And while you're typing that in, Iridology will help you stop overwhelming your clients. I'm just waiting with bated breath to find out what people are saying who, um, more time for self. Oh, Martha, yeah. You know, as holistic practitioners, we often get what's left over. And that's not good. If our wells are not full, if we are not feeling on top of our game, how do we do a good job for anyone else? Yeah. Anyone else have something else they would do? Ah, Stephanie says, see this happening in my office every day. More time to see clients. 
Fabulous. Yeah. And if you're seeing more clients, that helps your income, right? The more successful you are, the more you want to keep doing it. If you're finding you're spending a lot of time, you're giving that time away and you're, the income's not there, the temptation is to get a real job. I'm here to tell you you've got a real job. You've got a real job. It just You just need to manage it more effectively, right? Thank you for sharing those comments. That was brilliant. So this is what one of my recent grads said about the class. This is Michelle Davies. She came to me already well certified, a little daunting actually. She had studied iridology already with David Pesek and had his levels one, two, and three certificates. And she had done iridology and professional practice with Darko Purse. She also came in as a herbalist and a nutritionist. She had all of that under her belt. <laughs> Uh, but this is what she said. This is the most amazing iridology course I've taken. Judith's course is top on my list. Judith's iridology course is very informative, descriptive, and complete, as it contains the most accurate iridology, including sclerology, and most importantly, how to put it all together and make a proper assessment. I feel most confident in my nutritional practice now. That's what she said when she was in the course. Then she finished the coursework, and hit some speed bumps and was not going to finish her certification. We had a little chat. We did. We had a little chat. And I said, Michelle, you can't do that. You are so close. You have got to finish. You are so good. You have got to finish. I will help you. Let's get it done. So she did. Okay, this is tender heart time. This is where my pride shines through because when she finished her certification, she said, Woohoo, this is so amazing to become certified. It was a great journey through Judith's class and extended webinar tutoring. Her faith and personal care really made the difference and encouraged me to find, encouraged me to the finish line. But it doesn't end here. I have gained a confidence in myself in promoting good health through nutrition, lifestyle, and personal awareness for optimal health. So proud of Michelle for sticking to it and getting it done. So proud of her, as I am all of my students, whether they certify or not. So I'm hoping this doesn't sound too good to be true because what Michelle learned is that with iridology, she could gather that base of information. She could let the eyes teach her what questions to ask. The assessment became the rapport building intake without wasting any client time doing a silly intake form. Um, and she's, you know, she's just, she's just doing so well. And so do my, all of my students who graduate and use what we teach them. When you're doing iridology, we're going to look at a lot of eye slides coming up very in just a moment or two here. You're going to see some eye slides and they are really awesome photos. So I'm here to tell you that, yeah, you can get images like that with a camera like this. But I'm also going to tell you that this is not where you start. This is $5,000 worth of beautiful equipment. It actually lives on my desk. I have another setup as well that has a different lighting setup on it. And yeah, you want to get the best pictures, you get one of these, but you don't start there. Like I said, 5,000 Canadian, probably in the ballpark of 3,000 US. And I, when you're ready, let me know. I'll connect you with the ways to get it and I will help you get it. But until then, that's not where we start. That's not where any of us started. This and this are where we started. And yes, I keep my those pieces on my desk. I still use them. These are the pieces that we use to do iridology when we're starting out. Or if I am with a client and maybe I've already got photos, but I don't want to get them out on my computer. I don't want to open that file. I just need to see something really quick. I'll pull out my equipment. I still have my original jeweler's loop that I use and my pen lights in here and my magnifying glass. It's all here. So start with this kind of equipment, eBay, 70 bucks, 75 Canadian, probably less than 50 American. And you've got the equipment you need to get started. So please just start there. Just start there. Don't think you need this. None of us start here. And you need to know you love this before you invest that kind of money. So check out eBay or, uh, sorry, Amazon or, you know, 
Target if you're in the States or in Canada looking at Walmart or you know places to get it for inexpensive. That's where you want to be. Let's look at um, our first case study. But just before we do that, I want to make sure that what I'm teaching is working for you. So this little quiz is what kind of equipment do you need to start doing iridology? Do you need a microscope, a stethoscope, a periscope, an expensive camera, or a magnifying glass and pen light? Doing well, doing well. I love it when my students get it all right. Now somebody hasn't voted yet. Just saying, just saying. But everyone who's voted has got 100%, yeah. All you really need is a magnifying glass and a pen light. Now, your magnifying glass, you want to be somewhere between 5 and 10 power. I would suggest getting one like this that actually has three interchangeable lenses of different powers. It gives you a lot of flexibility. Excellent. Thank you so much for weighing in on that. I really appreciate it. So this is a female client. She's in her mid-60s. She's about 20 pounds overweight. And the diagnosis from her doctor is that she has elevated blood pressure and elevated A1C. Do you know what A1C is? If you know what A1C is, let's actually have you type it in. Type it in. Now, this client is actually a herbalist that I trained nearly 40 years ago. We've been in touch all these years. So she knows her herbs. She knows her nutrition. She's got a lot of stress. She cared for her uncle for many years until he passed away. She was his advocate. She was the one to visit him in the nursing home and to, um, to, to advocate with the, the health care providers about his meds and his diet and things like that. I apologize. That sounds like a windstorm just went off. I, it'll be gone in just a moment. And then, um, and then, her, her uncle passed away and then her mother became very ill. And so she's nursed her mother for quite a few years and the mother just passed away a year and a half ago. But this woman is the executor and it just, you know, she's got all the stress and her husband's been diagnosed with a, a chronic degenerative, eventually fatal health condition, which is just an extra ton of stress on top of frequently going out of town to babysit grandchildren for a family that has very different values than what she thought she raised them with and things like that. So lots of stress. So Martha has replied to what is A1C. Thank you, Martha. A1C is average of blood, uh, blood sugar over three months. No, not quite. Not quite. Good guess, though, Martha. Good guess. But A1C is an indicator of inflammation. And the higher it is, the more likely it is that you will have um, elevated blood sugars. So it's not just over three months, it's over the long term. Strong correlation because of the blood sugars to type 2 insulin and to massive inflammation. It's also sometimes tied into um, a longstanding infection process in the body. So you're close, Martha. Good job. Thanks for weighing in on that. I really appreciate that. So as we look at this client's eyes, the first thing we note is that she is the biliary constitution. So the biliary means she doesn't have blue eyes, she doesn't have brown eyes, she's got something in between. And there are specific things that we look for that make it definitely biliary. This is a good example. And as such, we know that being biliary, that the liver is going to be one of the things that probably will need attention. So the questions we want to ask are, how's your liver function? And how are your cholesterol and triglycerides? Now, most people won't know how their liver function is, really, honestly, right? When you think about it, most people don't know that their liver does over 500 different things. But most people do know if their cholesterol and their triglycerides. So that's a cool thing to be aware of. And so what I would write down in my notes then is I would write biliary. Beside that, I would write liver, question mark, cholesterol, question mark, triglycerides, question mark. And if the client knew had any information, I would put that beside those comments. So her cholesterol is elevated, not dangerously elevated, but elevated enough that the doctor is talking about using a statin drug with her. Beside that, then in my notes, I make notes that say, 
I want to consider adding leafy greens, get rid of coffee and get rid of alcohol. So these are notes from my eyes only, my client's not seeing this at all. I can also ask the client more specific questions about liver that may resonate better with her, that she might understand more. I might ask her if she's ever been jaundiced, if the whites of her eyes are ever yellow. Does she get nauseous when she eats fatty foods? Does she have itchy skin? Does she have a poor immune function? I can also ask her about anger because liver is where we store our anger energy. Does she tend to have a bit of a trigger, hair trigger temper? Is she, um, does she keep score, hold a grudge, things like that? And, you know, I've known, like I said, I've known her for nearly 40 years now. And uh, we had babies together kind of thing, right? We're, we are close in many ways. And um, I know that she's had a lot in her life where she's had to really swallow anger and tamp it down good and tight and then ignore it because that was the only way she could get through the situation. The next thing I'm looking for is what we call the lipemic diathesis. Now you'll notice as you look all the way around the circumference of her eye, of her iris, that you will see that there is at the top here this milky white band. This is the lipemic diathesis. And she has it in both eyes and in this, in both eyes, it actually is spreading. This is not a, an iris sign, it's a cornea sign. So this is developing in the cornea. And when we see this, again, we need to ask about some things because this correlates to her liver enzymes that handle her carbohydrates and it may also correlate to pancreatic enzy enzymes that handle carbs. Obviously, you, you're putting two and two together here that if the liver enzymes that handle carbs are out of balance, that is going to push her cholesterol out of balance because we make cholesterol from carbs, right? We don't make cholesterol from fat. We make it from carbs. So this is a strong indication that her cholesterol is out of balance, and it's a strong indication that she has the right fats in her bloodstream, the right triglycerides, the right cholesterols that could sediment in her bloodstream and create arterial problems. Not a guarantee of, just a strong suggestion that. So as we look at this, then we need to know her numbers. Does she have those numbers from her doctor? What is her cholesterol? What is her triglyceride? What's her high density to low density ratio? And when we know that, we then know further what we need to recommend to help her get things in check. So again, I'm really still at that, add the leafy greens, eliminate coffee, eliminate alcohol. I might at this stage also suggest uh, controlling her carb intake, I might suggest getting some exercise every day. And I'm not a huge believer in what I call the spandex workout, you know, where you um, get all sweaty and everything. I just want her walking. If I can get her walking, I have won and she will win. The next thing I'm looking for here is what we call the circulatory ring. As you look at her eye, you probably notice she has this mauve on my computer screen. It looks mauve, it might look, look more blue on your computer screen, depending on your settings. But this mauve haze hanging off the side of her iris, this is a circulatory ring. What it suggests is that circulation doesn't like to go all the way to the extremities. So these people will often have cold hands, cold feet, cold nose, cold earlobes. On a nice summer day, if they were to touch their skin, their skin would feel very cool. Okay, and people will, if they touch them, go, man, you're cold. No, I'm just comfortable. I'm fine. I'm good. Right? So when we see this, we ask about cold hands and cold feet first, because that's the dead giveaway here. And then we want to, in our notes again, consider recommending protein throughout the day, getting rid of the refined carbohydrates that are going to make the blood sugars do this. We need to have her get exercise, especially right after meals, right? Is this sounding a little like anything you recognize? Or what kinds of other conditions would you consider making those recommendations for? Let's have you type that in. What kinds of recommendations would you consider getting more protein, eliminating carbs, and getting some exercise? Give you a minute to do your lightning fingers routine here. And again, there's no wrong answers here. If you've got some experience where you'd recommend this for something, I want to know what it is because I may be the teacher here, but I learn a lot. 
Okay, so you, you want to suggest that she gets more quality fats. Absolutely, Martha, we need good quality fats here. Can you see any health conditions that this might be reflective of? Yeah, you, you'd make these recommendations if someone was obese. Absolutely, Joan. And if they had any kind of diabetes, good call, Tammy. Absolutely, absolutely. And actually with that, her A1C being elevated, it does really suggest type two diabetes. Stephanie says you do this to stabilize blood sugars and eliminate cravings. You sure would. Excellent, Stephanie, well done. Well done. Looking at her A1C and looking at her fasting blood sugar, she actually did come out to be type 2 diabetic. Very, very mildly. But enough that if she kept that up, we'd be headed down the wrong path, especially knowing her family history. The next thing I wanted to look at was these rings that we call contraction furrows. So these pieces of rings that come around in the eyes. You'll notice something interesting. Just need to ask, do any of you who are practicing iridologists have an iridology camera? If you do, raise your hand. Martha, you do excellent. So Martha, I'm going to give you a little tip here. And that is hopefully your camera, like mine, has the option you can see here of having two lights and hopefully you can switch between the right light and the left light or have them both on if you want to see contraction furrows more clearly turn off one light you'll notice here in this image of this client's right eye i have both lights on we can see some contraction furrows but you'll notice that when i turn one light off the contraction furrows absolutely pop okay just a little tip on your photography there so contraction furrows are present in someone who spends most of their time functioning in the sympathetic nervous system zone. That means they are always ready to fight, flee, or freeze. So they're waiting for the next crisis, the next shoe to drop, the next bomb to go off, the next whatever. They are not living in that tranquil zen zone. <laughs> They're always just on edge. And when a crisis happens, they're the first one to go, ah, and panic, right? Alternately, they've learned how to manage it really well, and they function really well under the crisis. And that would be your emergency medical technicians and your emergency room doctors, right? They do well under that kind of stress. When we see this, it suggests she burns through her B-complex vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium at record speed, okay? And so we need to be very aware of that, and we need to uh, understand how being in that kind of stress can put stress on the circulatory system because it elevates your blood pressure, and if you are sedimenting arteries, what does that elevated blood pressure do? It puts stress on the heart and the lungs, right? So we can trace it back and not only see where is the origin, but where is all of the damage likely to happen? And then we can support the areas that are going to be bombarded with the damage, but we can also help to work at the root cause to undo the cause. Okay, so I have another poll for you here. Again, I want to make sure that you're getting what I'm teaching. Um, my daughter has a funny way of saying that. I don't remember what it is, but are you getting what I'm dealing or something, whatever. And so the question is, what is the name of the sign that suggests, I can only see part of the question on the screen, suggests an increased risk for elevated cholesterol and or triglycerides. So far, so good. About a quarter of you have voted and you've got it right. Talked about this about two slides ago. Okay, doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Okay. All right, but only half of you have voted. I'm feeling lonely in my sandbox. And you know what I'm gonna tell you is, I would rather you vote and maybe got it wrong because that gives me a chance to go back and reteach it, make sure you've got it. So never be afraid when you're in one of my classes of getting something wrong. I will always use that as a teaching moment to make sure you really did get it right. Okay. Most of you have voted. 
let's close the poll. We had some incorrect answers. Some said lysozyme, most said lipemic diathesis, which is the right answer, and some said lipotropic factor. So again, we're going to flip back. Let's just flip back to lipemic diathesis for just a moment. This milky white film is lipemic diathesis. Diathesis means ten tendency toward lipemic means fat. So tendency towards fat buildup is what it means, but we're speaking specifically up in the bloodstream here. Okay, so yeah, Martha says you were talking rather fast. The new word people might not have caught the right word. Absolutely, Martha. Gotta pay attention and read your screen as well. Thanks for the comment, Martha. Got so much I want to cover with you. My goodness gracious, so much. Okay, so if you're loving this so far, and uh, if you want to know more, that is why I teach classes. So beginning Wednesday, the 17th, next Wednesday, I can't believe it's already next Wednesday, we have another go-round of Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology starting. We run it in two separate sections, and that means that you can ought to be in the morning class or the later class, and I guess depending on your time zone, it might not be morning. Um, I've got one student from Australia, so for her, it's actually tomorrow when she does her class. So you have the choice. So if the earlier slot, time slot does not work for you, you can sign up to be in the evening slot. And we'll give you lots more details about this as we go through today. Here are some of those details. What you will learn is beginning to intermediate iridology and sclerology at a level to prepare you for the IPA certification exam if you choose to certify. Now I know not everybody wants to certify, but if you do, that is an option with the information I will be teaching you. So everyone gets the same curriculum. There are just some bonuses that you can take advantage of or not. And we'll talk about those in a minute. We integrate basic nutrition and herbology. So I'm not actually teaching nutrition. I'm not actually teaching herbology, but I am including those. And this is where I draw on the student's information. So if you know something about nutrition, we'll say, what would you recommend for X, Y, Z? And you can contribute that. There's a bit of nutrition and a bit of herbs in the textbook that I've written. And so you will find that there will be some support there as well. But we do integrate this on a level that ties in beautifully with iridology in the course. So Belinda asks, new or and have no herb or nutrition background? Yeah, you're going to get the basics of what you would need to do with iridology within the scope of the course. And I certainly would encourage you to continue your studies in nutrition and herbology or herbology. You don't have to have both um, on your own as well. And I can, uh, in the scope of the course, I can give you leads to other places where you could get your nutrition or your herbology as well. But again, we're relating the nutrition and the herbology always back to iridology. So you're not going to come out with a nutrition diploma or a herb diploma from this iridology course. But you will come out with what you need to be able to work, work on your certification to certify. The course is the first step of the certification. So to be clear, you are going to learn how to create programs right in your sessions and eliminate the unpaid homework time. Yip e right? You're going to learn how to do a base assessment in five minutes or less without lengthy intake paperwork. So you're going to save a lot of time and do a better assessment. You will learn how to ask only questions that are relevant to your client's needs. When you do that, when you are really lasered in on your client's needs and you're asking only questions that relate to your client, that creates a much deeper rapport way faster than asking a million unrelated questions or giving a questionnaire that has, you know, 90 questions on it, most of which are not important to your client right now. But when you are asking questions that specifically relate, and even if the client's answer is, um, well, no, I, that's not me, you can still tie it in and say, well, I'm asking it because this is how it often ties in. And your client will feel so much more understood because you are lasered in. 
you're going to learn how to prioritize the problems your client needs help with. So as we look at the eyes and we see how markings all work together to create a story and a picture, it helps us to start that to start with picking that first step, second step, third step. We will connect uh, what you know about nutrition and or herbology with the iridology. So you'll be able to use the iridology with anything you already know. And you'll also learn how to do a deeper assessment for more direction and from a deeper understanding of your client's needs when that's needed. This is another student of mine. This is what she said. She also came to me well certified. She already had nutrition. She was a CNHP when she came in to see me and she specialized in natural digestive health support. She said, it has been such a pleasure studying under you and learning from you. I really miss our classes. Oh, I hear that so much, but I'm looking forward to completing this component of iridology and continuing my education, most hopefully with you. And I am developing more courses, by the way. It truly has helped immensely in my decisions and assessments. Then she completed her certification. She did all of the exam work. She did all of the case studies that were required and she passed. Yes. And she said, thank you, Judith. I'm so very happy. This is a dream realized. And I am so very thankful that I had the best teacher to educate me. Forever grateful, Karen Choate. I, I seriously believe I attract the nicest students. So if you're nice, you can take my class. <laughs> How do we teach iridology and confidence? That confidence is the one we need to teach here, right? We do it through 20 sessions as live webinars. So it's about 40 hours of live training. Each class is recorded in its entirety and posted on your student website. So you've got 18 months then to access all of that. Plus all of the content is divided into individual topics. So if you don't wanna to listen to the whole class again, you can just listen to that topic. Now at the end of 18 months, some other stuff happens and that's, I'm gonna tell you about that in just a moment. You have a digital textbook that I've written and you can download it. It's actually not weekly installments anymore. You can just download the whole thing in your first class. That is a bonus for you that you get that. So many classes, you take the class and you have to buy the textbook separately. I gift you the textbook. I gift you the cheat sheets. This is where the whole, the whole curriculum is done up in a, in a 50 page chart. Sounds like a lot where it describes, gives you the name of the marker, a description of the marker, common symptoms you might see with it, the questions you would ask your client, common suggestions you would make for lifestyle, for diet, for supplements. So this is where um, if you're concerned that you don't know nutrition or you don't know herbs, again, you've got this as your cheat sheet. The class starts with a review of the previous week. So every week, the first question is, any questions from anything we've covered so far. And if we're on lesson 15 and you need us to go back to lesson three, so be it. We go back to lesson three, make sure that everything is rock solid, and then we continue on. We have a lot of in-class practice and interaction. If you were doing this face-to-face, -face, you would have maybe six or eight or 10 students in the class and you'd be practicing on each other. When we practice, we use eye slides from my clients and I have got hundreds of clients that were constantly accessing different eye slides and looking at different markers and looking at different case histories. You get a certificate of attendance for attending 80% of the classes live. We have a private Facebook group. This again is a bonus just for my students and my alumni. You have a question or a concern, post it in that private Facebook group and we will answer it won't just be me it'll be grads it'll be other students it'll be you've got a community there to help you with whatever you've got a question on and every month we do a monthly q a webinar we call it office hours this again is a bonus where you can send me cases that we can discuss if you have a question about a marking that you didn't want to post on the facebook page you can post it here this last month what we did is um, I, I wanted to talk about marketing your business what can you do to help market your business more successfully? So we lobbed that out there and we let everybody who was on the call weigh in with things they had done that had helped build their business and make them more successful. So I'm not just teaching iridology. Heavens, anyone can teach iridology. I want to create that supportive community for you to help you be a successful iridologist. 
and to help you be one of the best iridologists in the world. My goal is to create iridologists who stand shoulder to shoulder with the best. So what's the course worth? The tuition is $19.95 Canadian. Now, if you're in the US, you're going, $19.95, that's a lot. Remember, your dollar's worth a lot more than ours. When you put your tuition through on your credit card, your credit card company will take care of converting it to Canadian dollars, and it's going to come out to about $14.95 US. So you've got a benefit here. Your dollar is worth, well, our dollar's worth 25% less than yours, so it is a bonus. This is a super high-touch class. You've got lots of access to me through Facebook, through our classes, through our office hours. It's not a correspondence course. You're not going to be left to your own devices. You will, you will have all the mentoring you need, and the mentoring does not end when the class is over because you will not be kicked out of the Facebook group. You will not be locked out of the office hours. As long as I'm teaching, you will have access to a support group. Um, just a moment. Oh, 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 hit the wrong button there. Sorry, didn't make, mean to make anybody seasick there. Okay. And I want you to look at this tuition from one other perspective, and that is you're going to go online. I know you are. Everybody does this. And you're going to find there are iridology classes out there that are face-to-face, -face, 700 bucks. And I know the teachers, they are good teachers. They will teach the course as either two, three-day weeks or one five or six day week, right? And so I want you to look at what that means. That means that you've got your tuition, you've got a week off work, what's that going to cost you? You've got airfare, you've got hotel, you've got food while you're there, you've got grand transportation to get from the airport to the venue, if you've taken your own car and you're staying at a hotel, you might be paying for parking every day on both ends, right? So by the time you're done doing a face-to-face -face class might be $3,000 Canadian, right? There's the other factor that is true for me, and maybe you don't learn the way I do, but I find that when I do a really long class like that, by the end of the first day and a half, my brain is mush. And by the end of this, that second day, I'm not even taking notes anymore. I'm just hoping some of it's going to sink in. I'm there to make up the time that I'm supposed to put in to get the certificate, right? It's not good. When you do a class where you do two hours a week, and then you go and you practice that for the week, and then you come back, and you build on that for two hours, and then you go and you practice that, the information sticks. It's like pasta that's properly cooked. It sticks right so just encourage you to think of it that way because again my goal is to turn out strong iridologists not just someone who's been to a class case number two this is an interesting one female age 53 she is a naturopath german trained so knows her stuff her father died from a heart attack and this client the year before these photos were taken also uh, was suspected to have had a mild heart attack Okay, so as you look at these photos, you're going to see a lot of things we saw in that first case that we looked at, very common markers. Now, we're not even looking at any specific heart markers here. We're not looking at anything specifically in the heart zone. We're not looking at a lacuna in the heart zone, a pigment in the heart zone, a rarefaction in the heart zone, um, a wayward fiber in the heart zone. We are just looking at things that you would be able to see really easily with your handheld equipment. So she's a biliary constitution again, right? Just like our first person. That doesn't mean all people with cardio risks are biliary. We have lymphatic people, we have hematogenics, so we've got blue-eyed and brown-eyed people that also have cardio risks. The first two here just happen to be biliary. So we wanna go back to the liver function and ask her about that. Now, being a naturopath, she knows a lot as well. Is she doing a lot? Not necessarily as much as she should be. And so I'm making, asking the same questions and I'm making the same notes. Now, her big downfall is being from Germany, she loves her coffee. She often has two cups of coffee a day. Coffee is really hard on the liver. And I mean really hard on the liver. Hard on the stomach lining and the thyroid and the adrenals and your bones 
hard on a lot of things, but it's really hard on the thyroid. Biliary types should just simply not be drinking coffee. It's really simple, comes down to that very easily. And so reminding her that what she knows about coffee and what she does about coffee need to be in sync was probably the biggest lesson we had to work with. And then we have the lipemic diathesis. So here we have that marking again that I went through way too fast being a new word, lipemic diathesis, there we go. And so again, she's got that risk, that liver and pancreas risk of creating triglycerides and cholesterol and creating sediment in her arteries. And so we need to be working with this and it's not gonna go away. When we clean up her diet and support her liver, this isn't gonna disappear out of her eyes. The cornea is stingy. Once it's latched onto something, it keeps it. It's always gonna be there as a reminder that she needs to behave herself. So now she doesn't have high blood pressure, so that's a good thing. She also does not have lab tested elevated cholesterol or triglycerides, so that's a good thing. We need to remember that what we see in the eyes often, especially if it's the sclera or the cornea, precedes the clinical manifestation. So when we see it in the sclera or in the cornea, it's, and it's in the early stages, it's not going to show up on a lab test. Okay, so she's got, um, because she's already had one heart attack, one mild heart attack, and she has the lipemic diathesis, her risk of having another heart attack within the next five years is 35%. So we want to be doing some preemptive work here, right? We've got to be making sure she doesn't have another heart attack. We need to clean things up for her. You'll notice also that she has the circulatory ring, that mauve ring up here at the top edge. Now, it doesn't need to go all the way around, and it often won't. But where you see it correlates to where the circulation is the least effective. So she struggles with circulation into the head region and to the core of her body a little bit more than she does to the periphery, okay? So again, it's when you see this, think of lack of oxygen getting to tissues because of poor circulation. Think of lips turning blue, lack of oxygen, right? And so we really need to be working with that. She again has that anxiety to, or that um, we call it anxiety to tanning, considered just to be contraction for us. She has the rings going around in her eyes. And so that also is going to be a concern. She lives in that sympathetic reaction field and she's always, always at the edge. She looks chill, but when you, hear her talk one-on-one, -on -one, you realize that there's, that everything in her life is a stress. Even things that you or I might think, well, that's going well, it's a stress for her. She sees everything through a lens that says, I'm stressed out. So again, we need to get rid of caffeine. We probably want to consider adding magnesium and B vitamins and to balance her proteins to help her with all of this. She also has down here what we call a meandering vessel. Now, the meandering vessel with it located where it's at can mean a few things. It can mean that the circulation in the organs that show up in this part of the iris is congested. Or it can mean, especially because she has the beginnings of one over here, it can also mean that she's had some injury to, to her spine. So we want to ask both of those questions. Because she's had a heart attack, I lean more to congested circulation. And I'm going to be putting on my list of suggestions vitamin E and oral chelation. Okay, so again, she was well-versed in, in all things natural. She's a naturopath. She works now in Canada as a massage therapist because jumping through the hoop, hoops to get her naturopath, naturopathy 
recognized here was just going to be more than she wanted to do. And so she works as a massage therapist. I believe she does biofeedback as well. Um, but it was easy then to, you know, suggest more leafy greens, some vitamin E and oral chelation. And that's actually where we started because I felt this was more of an immediate concern than working on her nervous system. When we do oral chelation, we typically do it for one month for every 10 years of her life. So she would have been on it for about five months. And um, then I would have said, um, if she'd come in again, being a naturopath, she wants to do it on her, on her own and that's fine. But the next step that I would have done would have been to work on the nervous system to make sure she was getting enough magnesium and B vitamins to make sure that she was practicing the things she knows to center herself, whether she lives in the mountains. So whether it's going for a hike or meditating or doing yoga or having a massage herself, right, needed to be looking at those kinds of things. So have you, are you beginning to catch a glimpse of how when you understand the iris and the sclera, you can accomplish much. Now, while it's fresh in your mind, oh, I want to lob two little polls at you. The first one is with iridology, we cannot. What are the two things we cannot do with iridology? So far, so good. Yeah, yeah. Loving this. Well done. Fabulous. Everybody's voted. Yay, go you. And everybody got it right. Love it. Awesome. Okay. So then the next one I want to lob out at you as a quick little poll has to do with one of the signs we've just learned. And that is the circulatory ring. Remember, that was the blue or mauve edge to the iris. Always means an increased risk of stroke suggests an increased risk of circulatory insufficiency. You should be able to choose two answers here if I've done this right. Is blue or mauve and gets darker or more pronounced with age. Love it. So far, everyone who has checked in, okay. Anyone else want to weigh in on this one? Oh, you've done very well. Done very well. So the answers are suggest an increased risk of circulatory insufficiency. Brilliant. It is always blue or mauve, but it doesn't necessarily get darker or more pronounced with age. Okay, so we're looking for it to be blue or mauve. And what it means is an increased risk of circulatory insufficiency. So are you starting to see, if you're starting to see how you can use iridology with whatever other modalities you've got, let's have you raise your hand. Can you see how you can tie in your nutrition or your herbology with nutrition? And if you don't have those under your belt, are you getting an image, a vision of how they would work together? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. That's brilliant, thank you so much. So when you understand the iris and the sclera, you can integrate all of your nutrition knowledge, all of your herbal knowledge, and even your lifestyle knowledge. You can prioritize which pieces of education and homework to share with your clients today, in the next session, and in the session after that. You can decide what's the most important thing to do now. And you can create bite-sized, doable pieces of homework for your clients in your client sessions. So important to do that. And this is how another one of my students um, loves the information and is working with. This is Helen Murdoch. She's a registered nurse, but she wants to get out of hardcore nursing and do more with holistic health. So she's got a lot of training in herbs and nutrition. And most of it isn't from a school so much as studying wherever she can and picking up what she can. She says, I've been looking for a while, looking a while for the right iridology course. I knew immediately when I saw Judith that this is it. Her inclusion of nutrition and herbs was definitely a winner. Judith's teaching style is most interactive as she engages us, the students, in lively discussions. Judith's knowledge base is so all-encompassing. We, the students, believe she knows everything. 
<laughs> she operates like a coach with her use of motivational inquiry to help build our confidence as wellness professionals. The content of this course is so diverse, so much more than I had expected from an iridology course. I strongly recommend Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology to anyone who wants to learn iridology. Now, uh, Helen is just preparing to start the exam process. So I'm going to be excited to share what she says when she has completed that. So again, what's the tuition? It's 1995 Canadian and it closes, registration closes on October 15th because we've got to get a bit of paperwork back and forth. The class sizes are small, but class sizes are smaller than what we've got on the webinar today. I limit my classes to five, maybe six students in a class. I've even taught classes for one student. Yeah. And I keep my classes small because I want you to have some one-on-one -on -one time. I want you to feel comfortable with the people you're learning with. I want you to be comfortable asking questions, getting clarification, and sharing all of your insights and all of your experiences. Now, some of you are saying, I don't have 1995 in my back pocket right now. Is there a payment plan? And the answer is, yeah, there sure is. I love payment plans. I do so much on payment plans because it means that I can spin it out, right? I can take a little bit of time and that makes it more affordable, more doable right now. So the payment plan is four payments of 549 each. Now that's Canadian again. And of course, if you're in the States, that's going to be converted to your American dollars, which is great. So registration is open at Confident Nutritionist. You can hop on over there. Again, I keep the classes small. If you're wanting the four pay plan and you go to Confident Nutritionist, I want you to start, scroll all the way down to the bottom. At the very bottom, under the bottom yellow register me now button, you're going to see a text link that says, I would rather make four payments, please. Click on that and that will take you through the process that you need to do in order to get on board with the payment plan. So once again, registration is open right now. And as soon as we get your paperwork completed, you get full access to the Facebook site to the office hour site where we store those recorded calls. You get access to the first, the beginning stuff that you need for your class. So your textbook your and your, um, your cheat sheets are right there. You can download those instantly and start reading if you want and start getting yourself in the groove. Case number three. This is a female, age 58. She's at a really good weight and she has a very clean diet. Not quite as perfect as she'd like to, but it's a darn clean diet. Now, we've looked at eyes that had a lot more brown in them and they were called biliary eyes. They weren't completely brown, but we called them biliary. These eyes are called lymphatic because they are primarily blue. And so we can see all kinds of circulatory issues in a lymphatic iris as well. This client likes to be very active and she strives to maintain good nutrition, although she sometimes does enjoy sweets a little more than she should. She has taken to making her own sweet treats, but making them with xylitol so that she can really reduce the sugars in them. Now, you will notice if you look very closely that she has the very early beginning of the lipemic diathesis. Do you see how this upper edge of her iris is slightly white milky? It looks like someone sort of poured white glue in there and the white glue is starting to dry. That's the lipemic diathesis. So we asked her, we want to ask her about liver function and about cholesterol and triglycerides. And we want to suggest that she add leafy greens. And that's just um, on our notes so far. We no, I know this client well. She doesn't drink coffee. She doesn't drink alcohol. Those are totally not even on the radar for her. Now, even though she's got this lipemic diathesis, her cholesterol is a very low normal, and her blood pressure is also very low normal, which, of course, for those of you who know, know that the low blood pressure usually suggests adrenal fatigue. She also has, it's a little harder to see, circulatory ring. 
Okay, so again, we need to ask about her blood sugars. And I think, how does that tie in? Well, the blood sugars ties in because when someone is functioning in that sympathetic zone, the body shuts off circulation to the hands and the feet, and the body burns through its sugars faster, that leads to the hypoglycemia part of the cycle, right? So low blood sugars and cold hands and feet always go together regardless. And when we look at her eyes with the frontal lighting, we didn't do any side lighting here, we can still see bits of contraction furrows in here. So we know she tends to be more sympathetic dominant. So we have to work with balancing her proteins. We absolutely have to. All right. And then she has the meandering vessels. But she's got a lot of them, right? There's a lot of irritation in her eyes showing in various ways with all of these meandering vessels. She's got lots of them over here as well. And so when we see these thick meandering vessels especially, uh, we're going to ask about varicose veins. When we see thin meandering vessels, and these are the vessels that, that look like a river meandering, right? When we see these thin meandering vessels, we want to ask about spider veins. We, and because of the corneal arcus, or the lipemic diathesis is the other name for it, and the meandering vessels, we want to be asking about personal and family history of circulatory issues. Because when we have this risk of varicose veins and we have the lip lipemic diathesis, we know that there's an increased risk of blood clot formation, which of course turns into an increased risk of heart attack or stroke. Her history, her dad has had two heart attacks and is in heart failure now, not doing well, has been dragging this out for a long time, but is in recognized, medically diagnosed heart failure. When we look at her dad's dad, he had two heart attacks, one quite young and one uh, in his 80s. And the one in his 80s was supposedly mild, but killed him within hours. And when we look further back on this woman's father's line, we see that three of this, three of her great grandparents on that side, three of the four died of heart disease of some kind. So heart is a huge concern for her. And it's something that does weigh on her mind because she's got this history, which is why she watches her sugars. It's why she exercises. It's why she's good with trying to get her vegetables and her leafy greens. So we suggested or want to suggest for her that she may want to add vitamin E and some oral chelation. Now, again, she's really motivated, really motivated. And so um, she does work to get five to eight servings of vegetables per day with a lot of leafy greens in there. She's never smoked. She doesn't do the alcohol. She's really trying to keep her sugars out of the picture. Whenever she makes something on her own, it, of course, is sweetened with xylitol. And so she is working hard to make this all happen. And so we're uh, really working on, just let me close this window. I just need to, okay, um, I'll read that comment in just a moment. Um, and she's um, always working hard. So what we finally did with her is we suggested that she do vitamin E with oral chelation and that she also add omega-3 and CoQ10 to help keep her circulation, circulation working well and to offer her heart some support. Now, Martha has made a, a comment here. <laughs> she says, Martha, she says, Judith's classes are totally worth it. She over delivers and the information presented in a very structured and easy to follow manner. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, Martha's been one of my followers for a while. Lover, lover to pieces. So what will you learn in this big picture? What's the big picture here? You're going to learn to create the programs in your own session. Again, you're going to learn how to do that base assessment in five minutes or less, how to ask only questions that are relevant, how to prioritize those problems uh, that your client needs help with. So we'll go through the process in just a moment. I'll tell you what that means. How to connect what you already know to iridology, how to do a deeper assessment for more direction when your clients need that. And what's included again, you've got your 
webinars that are um, recorded, posted on your student's site. Everything is edited. We start with the review, lots of in-class practice, your certificate, so review, review, review. But you also get bonuses worth over $2,400. So here's what you're getting. I will gift you with an IPA student membership. So towards the end of your coursework, when you're hopefully getting ready to start your exam process, I will gift you with the IPA student membership. You need to have an IPA membership to certify through IPA. I will gift that to you. Worth of, and this 2,400 is Canadian, so 7,500 or $75 Canadian is roughly what it's worth. The digital textbook, it's over 200 pages long, full color photos, and $249 is what it is worth. Okay, and my comments and questions, see, there we go. It's what it's worth. You look online and you will find that any good iridology textbooks are, they're charging 250 or 300 US. This is Canadian again. The iridology cheat sheet with questions to ask 100 Canadian, my gift to you. The private Facebook group for creative, uh, uh, constitute, confident nutritionist dynamic iridology. I know what my class is called. 247, but it's probably worth more than that because as long as I'm teaching, you've got access. Monthly student-driven coaching webinars, office hours, 500 bucks. And again, yours to access for as long as I'm teaching. These are recorded. They are stored on your students, on a separate student site that you have access to. Uh, IPA exam part one. In order to certify with IPA, you need to have one year of college level anatomy and physiology and proof of that on a separate transcript or on its own transcript. And so some students do that before they take iridology, some do it after. I've even had some that had enough time that they did it concurrently. So whatever works for you. Um, and that's another reason why I start your membership at the end of your iridology course, because it's good for a year. That gives you a year to get get your A and P out of the way if you haven't got it done yet. But in order to do exam part one, I provide you with 10 case studies, 10 sets of eyes that you analyze, send back to me. I grade them. It takes me about five hours to grade them. And I gift you with that time. And then I gift you with another full hour where we meet online one-on-one -on -one to go over those 10 case studies and help you with anything that looks like it wasn't quite clear and commend you for things that are well done. Then IPA provides me with the level two or the exam two uh, case, which I give to you. And you do that as an assessment and send it back to me. And then we spend at least, I spend an hour grading that and an hour with you private one-on-one -on -one tutoring again to make sure you're rock solid. When you have completed both the exam one and exam two, and you and I are both absolutely solid that you know this stuff and you are golden, then I let IPA know that you are ready for the exam. You submit the exam request with the IPA exam fee to IPA and they uh, set you up with that final exam. So, how do, you, how do you actually do this? You go to confidentnutritionist.com. You select the course package you would like to register for. So, either the full tuition in one payment or the four pay. You pay your tuition or make that first payment. And then check your email. You should receive an email from me that has an attachment of a, a form that I need you to print, complete, and get it back to me, either scan it and email it or take photos and email them as attachments. That is your registration form. And if you're doing the payment plan, it is the payment contract. So you print it, uh, got ahead of myself, print it, complete it, scan it, send it back to me via email. And then you are in. Then I set you up with all of your links for your student site. Uh, you 
asked to be in, uh, included in the Facebook group and we let you in and we get you just all tickety boo. So again, the IFA exam process is part one, is the 10 iris analyses that I provide for you. I mark those. We spend time in private tutorial making sure they're solid. When we agree that that is really well done, then we jump up to IFA exam part two, which is the case study that IFA provides to me. I give it to you. You do the analysis, you send it in to me. We spend, I spend an hour marking it. We spend an hour together reviewing it. And if we agree you're solid, then I also spend time in that session teaching you things that you need to know to um, prepare for the written exam. Stephanie asked, do you have slots available in both AM and PM classes? I do, Stephanie. There's a little bit of room left in both of them right now. Absolutely. And then step three is the the uh, four-hour written exam. It has a four-hour time limit. It is open book. I always suggest that for a multiple choice written exam, you need to know 90% of the stuff cold. You need to have that down pat because the exam is about 250 questions. You do not have time to look everything up. And a part of your course with me is in order to progress from one lesson to the next and get access to that next lesson material, you have to pass a 10 question quiz with 100% on my student website. So I start preparing you for the written exam from the get go. By the time you're done, you will have to, I think there's two lessons that don't have quizzes. Um, you will have done 180 questions that I designed to prepare you for this written exam. And then you do the IPA written exam, make sure you've got your a &P completed within a year of that and you are golden, totally golden. All right, let's do a quick analysis here. Let me show you the five minute rule. So we haven't seen this eye before today and it doesn't matter what color the eye is. There's always something you can teach the person about their their wellness, their their predispositions and what's going on. So the, the iris is genetic. It is set, it's not going to change. The sclera may change. The white of the eye is what changes the most readily. So as we look at this eye, we notice first off that it's blue. That tells us this person is predisposed to elevated acid in their tissues, true of all people with a basic blue eye. We notice that we've got fairly good fiber structure here. This means the person is, um, and with the central lighting where we've obliterated any contraction furrows, but we've got a bit of one here. I'm betting there are more if we had side lighting for this image. I would go, because of this and how deep this one is right here, I would go with we've got contraction furrows living in the sympathetic zone. Then I notice that we have lots of these little petal shapes here that make it look kind of like a flower that's lost some petals. These tell me this person has likely is predisposed to challenges with their endocrine system. And specifically, I'm going to be wondering about blood sugars, adrenals, and, and uh, thyroid. I have reproductive hormones as well to a certain extent. And so I'm going to ask questions about those things, depending on where exactly these are sitting. For example, this one screams pancreas. This one also screams pancreas. So I'm really going to look at pancreas. We've got some flame orange in here, which also screams pancreas. Okay. Then I'm going to look at this ring that comes around here. And this is what we call a collarette. It correlates to both the nervous system and the intestinal tract. It's nicely placed, which means we're probably okay on transit time. We've got a little bit of stuff that looks like it has bled out of the cholerate. This suggests a predisposition to a bit of leaky gut syndrome. So I'm going to ask about if they have any idea how they assimilate and use their nutrients. Do they have inflammation in their body? Things like that. Then I'm going to come to the center, everything inside this cholerate. And I note that it's darker than the rest of the eye, which means it has is prone to a reduced functioning. I look at the edge and if you look closely, it looks like someone snipped, little snips out of the edge, which suggests a bit of a challenge with protein digestion. And you'll notice that there's a bit of a gray band behind that snipped edge, which suggests 
some difficulties assimilating nutrients. So I'm going to ask about energy. I'm going to ask how well do they heal? Because if they get cuts that don't heal fast, that tells me that they have a problem assimilating nutrients. They may not be digesting proteins well, but they're also not assimilating nutrients well. I am going to notice that we have a lipemic diathesis. And when I put that with brown pigment, which suggests a predisposition towards liver challenges, and with the pancreas coloring, that all suggests that we are very prone to triglyceride and cholesterol issues. So I will ask about that. We have this blob here which is called a pinguecula, and it suggests, again, a, a very dynamic liver enzyme uh, imbalance. And we've got um, a tangential vessel here, which suggests congestion in the circulation in all of the organs that are reflected in this part of the iris. So I'm going to ask about those as well, and notice that tangential actually continues down and around here as well. So there are a lot of risk of um, congestion in the circulation. That wasn't even five minutes. And it's given me so much to ask questions about and to prioritize. And I will tell you that my first, first level of concern with this client is going to be right back at the digestion. I need to make sure that she is digesting, that she's breaking down and assimilating nutrients well. That's going to be my first line. And as I counsel her on foods that would be more digestive supportive, I'm going to throw in some that are mineral dense to begin supporting the endocrine system. But I'm not going to address the endocrine as a standalone just yet, right? And I'm going to let her know that that's what we're doing. We're starting here with digestion and why. And in our next appointment, if she's done well over this month with really following instructions and sticking with her supplements and her nutrition and her lifestyle, then my next goal is going to be to look at how are her hormone levels being affected, right? And in my notes, then I will have be looking at that. And then next session, I'm going to want to somehow work in liver. And I'm going to want to work in circulatory issues in, in another session and just keep building. Okay. So the process then is this. When a client comes in, I always ask them what they would like my help with. Right? We need to know why they came in and we need to always keep that in mind. Then I'm going to assess their eye rides. I'm going to look and see what I see I'm going to make notes about what I see, and those notes are for my eyes only. I'm going to ask questions about what I see and gather more information from my client. So I ask questions based on what I see, and then I create that short list of recommendations based on what the client wants help with and what I see in the iris. I need to bring those together. The client needs to understand how what I'm doing is actually addressing their concern even if it's in a slightly roundabout way. Because we all know the symptom they bring in is not usually the problem. It is The problem is back here, and we need to take care of the actual problem in order to work on the symptom. Sometimes I will give something specifically for the symptom to make the client more comfortable. And from that short list, I'm going to choose a few recommendations to work with. Let's do another quiz because they are so much fun and it's good practice for when you are in the course. I have lost my quizzes. That's not good. There we go. Ha ha. Okay. Next one is when doing an iris assessment, the practitioner should never ask questions to help build the analysis. True or false? Yeah, yeah, so far, so good. Love it, love it, love it. Everyone who's voted so far has got it right. Love it, and most of you have voted. It is false. We always ask questions. This is a conversation. Everyone voted. Thank you so much for doing that. Alrighty, let's do um, 
let, let's also just as we as we're on this slide remember that a few recommendations I would never give a client all of the information that I see in their eyes and all of the recommendations all at once and I used to do that yeah I talk about scare them away yeah huh don't do that it doesn't work well right we need to break it down into bite-sized pieces, lay out that roadmap so that we don't scare our clients away. We want them again, massively successful in baby steps rather than a huge failure in one step. So to give them two or three little pieces of homework, you know, if they're coming in drinking 12 cups of coffee a day, you can't get them down to zero in four weeks. So the first goal is going to be, how about you keep track of that and limit yourself to eight cups a day you know as a holistic practitioner you're thinking that's not going to do any good but yeah it is it's pushing them in the right direction give them something to replace it with you can even say and replace it with four cups of coffee substitute and if you want to go faster than that be my guest if you love the coffee substitute and you feel like you can take your coffee away faster go for it i support you in that decision but for starts let's just really focus on reducing the coffee by four cups a day Keep it gentle, but effective. Choose things that will work. Now, in a true brown iris, you know, I used to think when I was young in iridology, man, you can't see a blessed thing in there. How do you read a brown eye? And so, you know, I asked for, I believe in prayer, okay? So I said to God one day, I said, God, I need brown eyes to come in and I need to practice reading brown eyes. So he sent me brown eyes within the next two or three months. I had like 10 or 12 people come through my door that all had really dark brown eyes. It's like, thank you. That's exactly what I needed. And here's what I learned. You can see so much in a brown eye when you know what you're looking for. Look at this one, for instance. We've got tons of contraction furrows. We've got these that radiate outward. They tell us volumes about the nervous system. You can see there's a darker border right here. Oh my goodness, that teaches us tons about her digestion. That's a female, by the way, in case I hadn't mentioned that. She has that lipemic diathesis. She also has the, the um, circulatory ring. When we look at all of the blood vessels here, oh, wow, this teaches us about allergy risks. We've got things we've got blood vessels that are pointing to specific problems that are saying look here look here we've got other kinds of things popping up here we can see all kinds of stuff and when we start layering these up and understand how they work together we have a beautiful picture this is a young man 21 years of age and we look he's got that same dark ring we look, he's got all these petals that teach us all kinds of things about his hormones and what's going on. We've got a dark brown, a darker brown pigment in a brown eye. Wow, that tells us volumes. We've got contraction furrows again. And if we look really closely, I'm not sure if this is reflection. I can't get this fellow back. He was actually visiting, visiting here from Philippines or Thailand or somewhere like that. So I can't get him back to reshoot his eyes. I think this is the beginning of a lipemic diathesis. Now, any of you a little concerned if you're seeing lipemic diathesis in a 21 year old? Remember that's risk of fat sedimenting in the arteries. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I actually read him the riot act about his diet because being a 21 year old male, he thinks he's, he's um, totally tough and can handle everything and nothing bad's ever gonna happen. It's like, you get your diet together, young man, because otherwise there's going to be problems here, right? And so um, so there's tons that we can see, even in a brown eye. So if you work with more people who have dark brown eyes, don't worry. You're going to be just fine. And we work with a sclera. People with brown eyes have scleras too, right? And so we look at things like this that talks about uh, carbohydrate issues. We look at things like this that talks specifically about blood pressure. We look at this, that talks about massive congestion and problems with carbohydrates. We look at this, that says a significantly increased risk of stroke. We look at this, that talks about liver, 
right? So we see so much in the sclera as well. All right. So now, you know, this is where the rubber meets the road. Why would you want to study with me? Well, I've been where you are. I learned iridology several different ways from several different teachers, and none of them helped me to connect all the dots. It wasn't until I figured that out by myself that I understood how to use iridology effectively in a consultation. I get it that there's financial and time constraints of running a business, taking care of a family, home, friends, and other important commitments. Remember, I've done this while having and raising seven children. My longest maternity leave was four weeks. My average maternity leave was a week to 10 days. Seriously, right? Take breastfeeding baby to work with me. Mm -hmm. Clients knew that baby got poopy while I was in a session. I'd change the diaper right there. Or when I had an office manager, I'd pass the baby out to the office manager. If baby needed feeding during the session, baby's, baby's hunger takes priority. I can breastfeed and talk to you at the same time, right? Now that we are empty nesters, who ever thought that would happen with having seven kids? Our parents are aging and need us. And most of our siblings live far away. So we are a primary, we're first call for all of our parents. I get it. I get it. That's another good reason for studying two weeks at a time. I understand your learning needs. We all don't learn in the same way. That's why I've got videos. That's why we've got textbooks. That's why we've got cheat sheets. That's why we do office hours. That's why we have Facebook. There's a lot to learn. It can be overwhelming. And again, that's why I've got all of these different learning tools. That's why we do two hours a week. And it's cheaper to study with a Canadian who charges in Canadian dollars, right? Right? Absolutely. If you can get the whole course with all of those bonuses and you're in the States and it's like 1500 US versus 700 US for just the course and no support afterwards, yeah, what are you going to do? Why should you consider IPA? It's an internationally recognized association. You will learn things by staying with IPA and doing some of their webinars and attending their symposiums when you can. You're going to be up on the latest research. Add your energy to that movement to have iridology recognized. Iridology is recognized in some countries like Singapore. Isn't that mind blowing? Um, and it shows your clients that you're serious about this, that you keep up on things, that you're not using outdated information. Again, the benefits, no more unpaid homework time for you. You'll be able to create those therapeutic sequences in your sessions that will keep your clients coming back. I have clients that, I that you know, you see them five or six times and they get to a good place and then they fade off. And then five or ten years later, they come back and they'll go, remember that thing you did with my eyes? I've forgotten most of it. Can we do that again? Or... I will often print up photos because I have a little photo printer and I'll send that with them and I'll have them make notes about what we're talking about when we do that, the analyses on those first four or five or six times, they will bring that back and they'll say, all right, so where do we go now? It's like, yes, right? Good way to get them coming back. We'll help you to eliminate your lengthy intakes and create that rapport that's so important and you'll be more precise in your client work. Absolutely. So let's look specifically at someone who has markings sitting in a heart zone or markings that suggest heart could be a risk factor. This is a female, she's in her mid forties. She thinks she contracted Lyme disease about 20 years ago, but the tests over the years have been very inconclusive. She has symptoms of IBS, food sensitivities and a weakened immune response and her energy is garbage, totally in the toilet. So she has a couple of things here that go on. And the first is what we call cardio abdominal syndrome. She's got a large marking here. The cholera bumps out into the cardiac zone, into the heart zone. She has a loop in the heart zone and a loop down here. When we have all four of those markings, that is cardio abdominal syndrome. And it explains why her gut is bad. And it explains why her energy is low. And it explains that she has a heart risk, that her heart does not work as effectively as we'd like it to. Now, she also has cardiorenal syndrome, which is like, oh my goodness, it doesn't get much more than this, right? She has 
these two markings sitting in the heart zone, but this is the one we are really most concerned about. And she's got one down here in the kidneys. If you know anything about kidney failure, you know that kidney, or sorry, that heart failure, you know that it puts a huge stress on the kidneys and the kidneys just can't function well. And so she's only in her 40s. She's not showing, showing any signs of that yet. And our goal is to help her never have signs of that. So we've just started working together. Um, and those are her heart markings, but it's not where I wanted to start because for her, when we look in this digestive area, she's got every suggestion of a digestive weakness that she can have from the gray edge to the distinct rain here to the snipped look here. And so we needed to start working here. And all I did, I love the Nature Sunshine products. I, we've used the Garden Essence Enzymes with her. That's the only thing I did with her. The only thing. Few dietary suggestions in the state. Your Garden Essence is called Proxime Plus. And within a matter of four weeks, she came back in and said, and she's working with naturopaths. And she sometimes flies to other cities to work with naturopaths. I mean, this woman's just got money and she goes where she thinks she needs to. And she came and she said, nothing anyone has ever done for me yet has had the impact on my energy and my digestion that you have with the dietary suggestions and these garden essence enzymes. I would not have known to start there had it not been for her eyes. So we've only worked together for a few times. We've got a lot of work to do with her over the next years, but we'll get there. We will do it one step at a time and she will have success one step at a time. So again, if you want to learn all of that and more, this is your chance. Jump in on confidentnutritionist.com. Choose your tuition, whether you're paying it all at once or whether you want the four pay. Let's get your registration in, get you taken care of. I will be cutting off registration, maximum six per class, probably five per class. That doesn't leave a lot of room. So you want to get in there and get it done. And I thank you for being with me today. I had way too much fun. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned a ton of stuff, ton of stuff. And... Do I have any more questions here? Yeah. One more quiz for you. The iris is and the sclera is. I didn't explain this in those words, but I'm hoping you caught it. Remember I said the iris doesn't change, but the sclera does. How do you think that translates? How do you think that translates? Oh my goodness, I have the smartest group. Yeah, most of you've got it right. This is brilliant. Brilliant. All right. Scary question because like I said, I didn't cover this one really well. I drill this in in the class though, believe me. I'm gonna hear it a billion gazillion times. Doing so well on here, excellent. I'm gonna close that poll now. The correct answer is genetic and dynamic. The iris is genetic. It is genetically determined. The sclera is dynamic. It changes based on what's happening in the body. So with that, my friends, again, hop on over, get registered. If you have any questions, uh, shoot them to me in an email, judith at cobblestonehealth.com. And uh, let's get them answered and get you ready to take this class. I look forward to seeing you in class next week. Take care and have a great day. Bye for now.